Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, and other fun, frightening, terrifying things. I think we all just finished watching AMD going, hey, yes. have uh, modern <laughs> cards to play with again. We're going to compete on the top end, to which we, were, we, we all uh, shouted in unison, wow, that's expensive. Um, I bought that price, though. <laughs> yeah. That happened, but that was kind of fun. I came up screeching in nine minutes in the door. I dropped. What I dropped was I discovered that uh, Walmart was selling KFC fire logs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're currently fifteen ninety nine. if Fried you're wondering. I, so I had to buy... What did I, I got eight of those, then I got eight um, Christmas fire logs that you can give as gifts. And so I'll be putting on some gloves and repackaging things uh, this afternoon for holiday gifts. <laughs> it's log. <laughs> it's log. That, there's your fair warning. If uh, you're one of my friends that uh, receives a holiday log this year, that doesn't <laughs> indicate that it's KFC chicken flavored. Yeah. <laughs> LG <secrets. laughs> So yeah, outside of that, man, um I released uh last week I put that up for patrons the uh Pi camera. So that's the thing. I got the little SSH Pi hack thing I gotta put up. I finished all the primary principal photography and all that. That's gonna be a thing um probably later this week that'll be up. Uh but I know a lot of people are like, man, what, why are you always covering these firewire audio devices, Vin? That's too mainstream. It's too modern. It's too new. It's a it's technology, man. I can't keep up with it. Why don't you do something a little more retro? I am. I'm currently. I'm currently looking. I kid you not. Kid you not. To pick up a PCI sound card for interfacing Linux. Now, this is the one that's going to bend your mind. That's still currently made in production. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's new. Brand new. You can buy one new in box. Uh, things get interesting when you realize it's, an, it's not a DSP. It's an FPGA on a PCI slot. And um, stay tuned to that. And I think a little bit later, uh, might be next month, I'm going to start work on setting up, uh, see if I can build it like an outdoor doll, like a music little station on a Raspberry Pi 4 and apply what I know about setting up real-time kernels and all that fun stuff and all the little weird, bizarre, undocumented things you get to get set up just right to um, see if we can make that work, man. If somebody's like, hey, I just want to do like a couple of tracks or something on the cheap instead of buying like an old laptop, which people do, and that's the worst thing you can possibly do for an interface and uh, be able to do it on a Pi. That'll be fun. I just got to figure out which Pi distribution I'm going to use because ultimately that's going to be the one that I'll be able to like ship effectively because apparently I'll be shipping a DAW distribution. So I just got to figure out which one I want to base <laughs> that on. What's new I'm with you, Jill? Linux. You keep getting yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, well, one thing I got is I, I got a, I know it's older. I got a, a GTX 1080 a mini for my mini ITX build, but it, it, it's still better at gaming performance than the RTX 2060. So got that card and then i'm gonna get probably the 3070 for my new rig and uh so looking forward to that and or or actually my broadcasting rig <laughs> and then another i didn't i need to get something else for my husband <laughs> so um but what was cool is i filled in for noah chelia once again on destination linux last weekend and had a really really great time the um a YouTube DL fiasco had just dropped. So we talked a lot about that, but it was a really fun show. And, uh, you know, thank you for having me on DOS Geek and uh, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> that took a little bit. Yeah, the other person. <laughs> I, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little asleep right now. I need to wake up. <laughs> wake up, Joe. <laughs> <But yeah. laughs> Pedro, what's new, man? Uh, over here, not much has changed. It's been raining outside, um, so there's that. Oh, wait, this is England, so <laughs> business as usual many, then. Uh, yeah, it's usually about year four it <laughs> sets in, Pedro. Like, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> it just rains. It's just something that happens Here's all the time. Here's a question. <laughs> Have you gotten to the point of your uh, stay that you 
do you carry an umbrella with you even if the sun's out? Uh, no, but the moment that the sky gets uh, really, really cloudy, it's like, no, nope, not risking it. <laughs> mm. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Anything you were up to, Pedro? Or did we, did we just uh, derail no, on no. that? No. Uh, I'm still waiting for the uh, Pie Boy DMG. It's been, it's been That's month. not going to happen. You were looking for things to benchmark. Why were you doing that? Because I was playing around with the uh, the Pied book, and I decided, you know what, might as well um, get cracking on that. Just get some performance numbers and write something for mm-hmm. LinuxGameCast.com. And uh, the video will be just basically a summary of whatever I end up writing. I have some key points already I'd like to bring up. But yeah, it was mostly me uh, running benchmarks on the, um, the Pied book and realizing, wait a second, the performance isn't bad anymore. It's only been a couple of months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's really good. How are they nice. uh, sock puppets for the video coming along? <laughs> 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 Might have to get Nori to give me a hand with that one. I, I think Nori would be more than Because I only have the one. <laughs> yeah. You can make a little Pedro puppet and a little, I don't know, um, other uh, Linus Torvalds puppet. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> Richard Stallman puppet. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, no. <laughs> so let's get right into it this week because we got to talk about it. And that's uh, what's going down with the GitHubs, man. That happened. Uh, mm-hmm. This is from Ars Technica. All this is going to be in our show notes, but uh, GitHub boots popular YouTube download tooler after all right. Yeah, man. It got nuked off GitHub. What are we talking about? YouTube download. DL, YTDL, it's something you've probably used at some point. And uh, apparently a lot of people used it. So they mm-hmm. sent him a notice and it kind of just got nuked from orbit to which I was shocked, Pedro. I was shocked because A, this mm. is using the DCMA as a weapon inappropriately. <laughs> Never seen this before. Um, no. No. <laughs> absolutely shocking i had to gasp but once i was done with the gasp uh r-i-a-a bra as the kids would say <gasps> we've had this argument before you lost i yes. think they might still be writing on mm-hmm. the uh kazaa high <laughs> Uh, but um whatever the case may be uh yeah it's um it got pulled, uh, not just the official uh, repo, but also all of the mirrors. Everyone who'd created a mirror uh, fork of the um, YouTube DL original repo has also been taken down. Uh, and the argument seemed to be about the examples that they used, because uh, if you had a chance to read the uh, the README in the YouTube DL repo, it was comprehensive. They literally told you everything you needed to, to know including a couple of examples which the RIAA brought up as being the copyright violations, which um, at this point in time, RIAA, even Nintendo knows better than to just fling the DMCA at people, and instead they start with a cease and desist. If they don't comply, then they start looking at the DMCA, but it's usually just a cease and desist because Uncle Nintendo is big and scary, and you don't want to toy with them. Even they know better than that. So, yeah. I hope this is just hopeful thinking on my part. I'm well aware of this, but I really hope a firm... Ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) Mario gonna cut somebody. Pedro Mateus, 2020. (laughs) No, I don't think it will be Nintendo, <laughs> but uh, I hope a lawyer firm or a very, very dedicated lawyer um, will get try and get an injunction to bar the RIAA from using the DMCA as a result of this misuse Does, forever. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, this all, I, I don't know the um, pertinent legalese, but I'm, in order to, I'm sure this operates something like YouTube's safe harbor clause where... They just, they're like, hey, we, we're we GitHub. We don't have anything to do with it. We just pass this information and along and we do what we're told. Ha, ha, get they to have us. to do it like that. Uh, uh, I saw Leonard French's video on it. And yeah, if GitHub wants to claim safe harbor provisions, they have to comply with these requests. Now, <laughs> a question for everyone is, who's not familiar outside of whoever did this with the Streisand effect? Because <laughs> they're you just made this so much more popular now. <laughs> currently 
more people <laughs> aware of YouTube Downloader than previously at any point in the history of ever. So I will mm-hmm. say good job on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And- <laughs> well, they were I'll even talking it. <laughs> yeah. Leah Laporte was even talking about it on Twit and they didn't even know what YouTube DL was. <laughs> so, but it was an interesting discussion nonetheless about the legal ease. But yeah, we had uh, talked about YouTube backup uh, two weeks ago, which is uh, like many other applications for Linux, Linux uses YouTube DL on the back end. So this is going to affect a lot of programs. And yeah. I have used it to backup videos on my own YouTube channel. And um, uh, I also use it to download and archive my favorite videos that I've already watched previously with ads. Yes, I, I know that is the issue. But if you watch it with ads and then download it, I don't think, you know, there should be a problem. (laughs) And I also use it to download Twitch streams as well for archiving because many Twitch channels, as a lot of people know, um, aren't Twitch partners and their videos get deleted after a few weeks. But one of the really good... uh, It's not the worst justification uh, for data hoarding I've heard. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that actually sounds like a very legitimate use i've thought about it you know like like, um, download what you're gonna download no one's gonna i mean they're just not gonna stop you uh this wait until they hear about 4k video download or what are they gonna do then because that's even got a GUI. yeah it does everything Mm -hmm. all of the other extensions Well, it's also, you know, another really good use case for it is for downloading tutorials for instructions. St- instruction. I have my, you know, students often download YouTube videos for that purpose and to also use for online content for creators. Oh, so it's there's great. A, I want to say, you know, that definitely, <laughs> all of that combined probably makes up probably almost an entire 1% of what YouTube downloaders is used for. Yeah, well, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. I don't like lying to people. Um, most people use it to rip stuff. Now, Pager, you uh-huh. have a use case. Now, here's the thing. We put all of our videos on YouTube up as Creative Commons. Share a is take them, do whatever you want. Just if you're going to monetize them, you have to release whatever you release under the same license. Um, Pager didn't have bandwidth. Now, what you were doing, Pager, was technically... Not legal, but I don't think anybody would be upset with you. Yeah, because when I first moved to the UK, I didn't have internet for a month. Uh, so uh, I, before I went home, I'd stop at the pub, get a coffee, download everything from my subscriptions, and then I'd get home and I'd watch the videos. Mm-hmm. There you because go. I didn't have internet yeah. at home. So... That was my use case. Yeah, no, according to the RIAA, I'm a gosh darn criminal, and I should be uh, fine massively. Well, you just shouldn't use YouTube Downloader. (laughs) (laughs) You can use all the other YouTube Download apps out there, the websites or the extensions on Firefox. This this (laughs) is just like, I don't understand what... uh, There are so many legitimate use cases, uh, even for content creators. Let's say mm-hmm. people like Linux Gamecast uh, that put out Creative Never Commons videos. Nope. <laughs> yeah, no, no idea. <laughs> okay, you, you can uh, come up with a like real-world example. Not one where I have to, if I want to get a copy of our 1080p60 source material that we're uploading right now, where I have to use a, a program like 4K Video Download or YouTube DL to get the version because YouTube only makes uh, the 1080p30 FPS, which they've re-encoded, available for yes. content creators, which I get to deal with all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, this is there's our comment on it. What's to be done about it? Sit back, grab some popcorn because you can't stop the signal. It doesn't work. Welcome to the internet. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I also like that one of the, uh, it was one of the links in the show notes that's gone now. It's just a 404, but yeah. that was a pull request to the DMCA uh-huh. repo uh-huh. that had the entire source code and the full readme of YouTube DL. It, that's the way it's going to roll. I mean, well done. Yeah. Don't, don't <laughs> gamify stuff like this. The internet will win <laughs> always. <laughs> Always. Um, and mirror PPC and chat, you're exactly right. You know, another another use case is to download the videos to be able to blow them up for accessibility for, for zoom people it that out are, more than the, the actual yeah. YouTube 
thing does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> People like me that are half blind. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Linux firmware, since uh, I think a lot of people, as I said, we've finished watching the AMD announcement. We're like, yay, NVIDIA's back in the game, which we're all very ecstatic about. This is AMD GPU Daily. I mean, this is daily updates of the AMD GPU firmware from the kernel repo added to normal Ubuntu Linux firmware package. So, I mean, if you're running something like a 2104, 2004, you can throw this in because this is a PPA, right? Don't use it with Debian, Pedro. Um, <laughs> you could if you wanted to. <laughs> I was going to stay out of that. But if you need a little bit of RNG in your life, this this can bring it, man. Because you, you can go from everything's great, everything's not great, to oh, nothing works, everything's great again. Every day. Look forward to it. But all jokes aside, this... This could be handy. Mm. This will, more than handy. This could be borderline useful um, when the new six thousand series land and nothing supports them out of the box. Exactly. <laughs> That's going to be basically necessary at that point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Especially till the new kernel comes out for particularly for Ubuntu in uh, the spring of twenty twenty one. So yeah, like Ven was saying, this will go a long way uh, when you need to install that new Radeon RX 6000 Big Navi card. And uh, it, it, it uses, uh, this technique uses no mode set to boot in Grub once again, but that, you know, you expect with uh, newer cards and then you got to go and download and, and update all your Mesa drivers. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> AMD. It just works. It beats better than having to. Uh, it's better than having to install those big icky Nvidia blo binary blobs, Pedro. Oh, well, I heard, one thing. Uh, one I thing I will ne give. They've never worked. <laughs> no. <laughs> but one thing I will give the AMD cards is that uh, even if Mesa doesn't completely support them, at least you'll be able to boot with it installed and get. To the GUI, even if it doesn't work very well, you'll be able to see a GUI uh, that worst drudge just drop down into run level three and uh, update Mesa <laughs> from there. The NVIDIA drivers, sometimes you have to completely disable uh, disable any kind of kernel mode setting because the moment the kernel and Nuvo see the video card, they go, yeah, this is an NVIDIA card, but I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> just long as ssh man i'm good I, I can find my way through it. Well, that works <laughs> this is good go check it out um, keep it around it's something to play with man I'm, I'm glad to see stuff like this i can make sense of it unlike this this is like google goggles <laughs> oh yes so this is a, a screen translator it's an open source standalone app for for not only air optical character recognition, but for converting text to different languages. And it's actually a little tricky to get it set up, get it set up and running because you got to download lots of updates and do them in a certain order. But once you do it, it actually works really great. And uh, ignore the, the instructions uh, in the article is for the Windows version, not the Linux app image. <laughs> and so there are a few Wait, little differences. Wait, you should be installing Windows in a VM right now to use this instruction? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, fine. Fine. <laughs> so I actually went uh, to our to linuxgamecast.com um, to, uh, to use that as conversion examples. And I played back and paused our LWW video from last week. And, and it worked. I had it convert English to German. And so when Ven was showing the website for Jammy that we talked about last week, um, it actually, I, I uh, uh, dragged the mouse box around uh, what makes Jammy unique. And it came out with the German answer, which I'm not good at pronouncing, but I think it's Was macht Jammy einzigartig? <laughs> Bless you. Sure. <laughs> ben would know. <laughs> but anyways, you know, it did it did it from a video. So I was really impressed with that. So not only in picture and uh, text, but video. 
And this is just, this is really great because I remember spending loads of time on my flat big scanner uh, converting printed documents to OCR. That was a big deal. And you remember how expensive that OCR software used to be? <laughs> it was sometimes thousands of dollars for really good software for that. And um, yeah, so the, I was really impressed with, with uh, Pedro, Screen Translator. Are you old enough to remember flatbed scanners? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I had to use one for university. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <He's> <laughs> <laughs> I I still use them for for scanning in really high resolution images of my artwork and and photos. Of course, I have a a large legal size flatbed that I do use for that <laughs> on occasion. <laughs> Uh, uh, but, I'm forced to yeah. go into the office every now and then, so I just save all my scanning needs. Which haven't been much, but I just save my scanning needs for when I'm there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah like, but um, also... Well, that's <laughs> one of the things I like about this. This is great, which is the optical recognition, because, you know, welcome exactly. to 2020, where I'm like, oh, I need to scan that. All right, click <laughs> with the camera. Seconds. Yeah. Oh, there's the text document. <laughs> Done. Yeah. Yeah. So I usually just use Google Photos because they have the OCR um, built right in. And you just click on the image and right click and do use Google Translate. <laughs> but being able to translate on good. the fly like this is going to be great, especially mm -hmm. when you can get a picture of something. Because you think about how many, well, not how many times, I can think of a couple of times when I've ran into like um, non Western character sets like um, mm -hmm. Chinese <laughs> or a Japanese. I'm like, ah, uh, I don't even know how to key that in to do a search for it, but I need to find. Like yeah. these six characters or these six. Three. I can't copy pasta. <laughs> Just right. let me copy pasta. <laughs> right. So, yeah, good to see. I'm very, very happy <laughs> that that's out there, Pedro. Mm. Cubed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Ben just said, Pedro, I was waiting for a question. So. Uh, <laughs> No, this uh, this is the Pine Cube. It's a uh, it's a camera kit. Uh, it, they'd already prototyped it uh, before, and it used the older version. Used a Sony uh, sensor with uh, eight megapixels, and the, basically the the board stayed the same from like early 2019 to uh, what it is now. But the current sensor, instead of being that Sony IMX179, it's an Omnivision yeah. 5 megapixel uh -huh. OV5640. Mm. At so, which point, I gotta ask, um, why? Well, I mean, as so, so soon as you... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's Cortex A7, 800 megahertz, 128 megs, mm -hmm. DDR3, uh, networking, 10, 100, 2.4 gigajoules on the Wi-Fi, media LED, USB 2, and that poop-tastic camera, which, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as soon, as soon as you get downgraded to that, and we're currently looking at, uh, I, I like a lot of the Pi stuff, uh, I've been a champion of, and I'm like, oh man, that's neat, great little tinker stuff, but at 30 bucks, Brad, 30 bucks. Here's my little mm -hmm. Pi Zero W camera case. I got a Pi Zero W too. But you can get this and uh, the Gen 2. It's childproof, sorry. Uh, <laughs> with this like built into an all in one enclosure for 20 bucks, maybe. So, yeah. And all this stuff's baked. And you're going to be like, again, once you roll it back to that um, potato camera, potato camera. Potato, potato. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, and I get that they probably dropped the uh, the Sony uh, sensor for the Omnivision, so you know, cheap. But at this point, with a five megapixel sensor, the the, the kinds you know, that Pedro, you'd find on a laptop. Pedro, in all fairness, I've heard legend that these could be upgraded with the use of gaffer tape. <laughs> mm. yeah. I, I think I've seen the scriptures. Yes. You'll be able to see them too. If you're our Patreon, you can already see them. <laughs> but yeah, no. It at this point, it's basically e-waste. That's it. That that that's what that is. It, it's a seriously mm -hmm. five megapixels, <laughs> really. Hey man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it if it was like fifteen bucks, maybe, but like thirty bucks, then you factor in shipping. I'm like, I can even like that. That that's too much of a tinker device 
too uh, too high a price for too much to tinker of like there's already baked solutions for them plus that's like big bulky yeah. I'm like i don't why why you gotta be so big it's Red? e-waste <laughs> <laughs> It's like you can genuinely fit everything in there minus the um, network cable. But then again, you could do like a GPIO breakout in this. Yep. So, mm. yeah, not everything can be a winner. Yeah. No, well, no, most certainly not. <laughs> well, Pine64 uh, is coming out with the Pine Sill solder, soldering iron that is in development for just uh, $24.99. Yeah, so uh, that would that could help Pedro. Uh, yeah, Pedro. Improve his soldering technique. Pedro. <laughs> I want you to buy that, plug it in, and go to bed. I dare you. Oh, uh, it's based on the uh, TS one hundred. <laughs> it it is basically a TS one hundred. It and. just has the mm. uh, the Pi uh, open firmware on it. Uh, the Pine, sorry, not Pi. But yeah, you no. So uh, terrified for terrified, you can't even. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Twenty five, twenty five dollars. Yeah, why not? I'd rather spend twenty five dollars on that and live plugged in overnight than spend thirty on a yeah. five megapixel <laughs> camera. If you get this, <laughs> if you get this, you get this. We could get some gaffer tape and we could put a camera on the solder guy. <laughs> ah, there we go. <laughs> but, yes, yes, we could. We could get it, we could three D print an attachment. You know, we're gonna have like the nice little. Cube and the, <laughs> the thing that stops me from seeing what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can work up a wireless video system so we can like send that to it. Yeah, it'd be brilliant. <laughs> Delio, Mega <laughs> Times yeah. Four. What's up with this, this is... Doctor Who Time Lord looking cliffs on the side of the case? I see what you're oh, going this for. Is awesome. That's not Gallifrey, and that's more like. Uh, uh, never mind. Go ahead, Jill. Oh. <laughs> So our friends over at System 76 have a new machine. This is the beautiful and powerful, powerful beast known as the Thelio Mega. And it's the world's smallest quad GPU workstation for deep learning and scientific computing. And what's so neat um, about it, not hmm. just that it has four GPUs, Hang is that on, it has one a moment. We need to uh, rank the uh, screenshot here. Where are we uh, at on poorly photo? Well, I mean, this is this is not often we get an ultra wide poorly photoshopped. Up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you this can tell looks... that it's shooped. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> you can tell that it's shooped because the curvature on the screenshot yeah. is not the same as the monitor. A lot and, of, uh, uh, it's also more in focus than effort. Effort. Went literally into anything this. else. <laughs> effort went into that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I'd give this a strong seven out of ten. Yeah, no, it, it it would like if you were just scrolling by and you weren't paying attention, you could probably couldn't exactly. tell. Exactly, scrolling yeah. by on this, I'd be like, all right, this, it doesn't like. I wouldn't scroll and go, whoa, whoa, what? What is wrong? With you first? <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I also love about this is the unique airflow. It the air comes through the side of the case and out to the back via several intake 140 millimeter fans mm -hmm. um, that are on the side and the bottom of the case to cool the four NVIDIA Quadro RTX GPUs. So and then, like looking yeah. at the case, yeah, the <laughs> fans definitely go burr. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> they'll go burr right up against that side panel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I love their, their animation here showing the GPUs, you know, sliding in there and the, and the airflow. And, Eight uh, two and a half inch bays. Okay, that yeah. <laughs> seems far more interesting to me than the four quadros. If for yeah. nothing else, the the price. <laughs> and it, it's got a separate intake also to cool the CPU, which is really you know brilliant design. And I actually spec'd out the Thelio Omega with the top of the line components and reached forty three grand. <laughs> on it Oof. with the, all the highest <laughs> specs but you know okay here's the thing it's so it's actually worth it because usually you need to you, you would have to buy several high-end workstations combined to get the performance from this beast so you know uh uh, companies that do, do that render animation or big companies that uh, do lots of AI. This is honestly cost effective. It's instead of buying, you know, three or four machines to do the same thing. This one, I'm going to say for like um, rendering animation, this would only be useful in a case where you'd have something a local B also like a tower as opposed to something that'd be fitting into a rack. 
yeah, where yeah. you could have well, a massive, like real, yeah, yeah. Render cars, well, the like content Voltas creation, V one thousands. Yeah, this, this is, is for content this creation. This is for like people at home. Doing yeah, content creation. It, yeah. Well, when you're like, say you're using Blender and you have a, uh, you know, uh, two terabyte uh, blend file, that's what this would be good for. <laughs> this could probably chew through that, maybe. Um, yeah. One thing I'm looking at is uh, the different color options for the wood paneling. I want to see an option for carbon fiber and I also want an option for a spoiler. No, <laughs> yes. I, I like that blue yes. one that you were looking at because it nope. reminds me of uh, white and blue soap, yeah, you which see. is very popular in Portugal. <laughs> also delicious, but this would look a lot better with a spoiler on the back. That's... Oh, System 76, you need to get the, the uh, Mattel fireball on the side. <laughs> there you go. See if you can get uh, that, li requires that license. licensing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But these are starting at seventy four ninety nine, so that's two fifty two a month with their financing plan. Uh, that's cool, man. Um, that's and, very good compared well, to. Oh, wait a second, wait no, the Mac Pro costs about the same at the lowest end. <laughs> the like I said, uh, definitely for like stay, you know, like local rendering because there's the big hitch with any desktop system that you're going to see like this because this is going to be limited to um, only uh, two hundred fifty six gigs of memory. Yep, which depending on what you're up to, can be kind of anemic, but yeah. it's well-priced. Mm -hmm. Still yes, needs a yes. spoiler. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. Any, <laughs> anytime something gets around Mac Pro pricing, my brain just goes, just let it go. <laughs> I like you're it, never going to have Here's one. Here's the thing. If you're going to have Mac, <laughs> Mac Pro pricing, you need to have Mac Pro level design, and System76 has definitely stepped up to that on the engineering side. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're doing their own cases now, even for even if that's a reasonably standard EATX motherboard under there. It's um, yeah, no that that Pedro, that case alone has I mean, a yeah, lot we of have to like roll back and think about it because I don't know. I mean, I'm happy with like open air test bench by that. I mean, a pizza box like I'm good, but <laughs> you know, I know people. <laughs> it, it's good to have the nice, pretty option for people who are into that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And if if Beautiful. the Linux world needs a Mac Pro in order to play with the big boys, yeah, System76 might as well do it. That's fine. Wheels <laughs> and a spoiler, though. That... <laughs> the spinny rims. No, no, no. Oh, could, could we get like a neon undercarriage? Get... Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what LEDs are for, man. No, I, I want um, Catho. I, cold Catho. Oh, what? you want the actual? <laughs> oh, baby. I used to have that. That's how we used to light our systems before LEDs, baby. I put some gold cathodes in cases before, not yeah, for myself, I remember but doing for that. people. <laughs> yeah. um, Even neon. Oh. <laughs> let's take a look at um, password men. We've, I think we give this a mention that a beta was coming our way, but there's a bunch yeah. of they password They threatened yeah, right? to mm -hmm. release one password. Um, well, the, they threatened to make the uh, open beta available. It wasn't closed beta before. Uh, and now everyone is welcome to download it, uh, kick the tires, let them know what's broken, what's working. If you're having any issues, uh, basically, Can, it's a beta test. One point Just is have coming. <laughs> I, I want some help for audio listen, listeners. Uh, Jill, describe what's wrong with those children's heads. Uh, they're in cardboard boxes. <laughs> That's oh, they're wearing cardboard guess. box helmets. Maybe. Okay, yeah. is that <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah, I, I guess because it's for security. <laughs> so instead that, of helmets, I think they're, they're imagining that they're on a spaceship. Oh, so yes. that is, they're marketing like, oh, we're as secure as a cardboard box helmet. <laughs> okay. No, they're supposed we're to be as secure as your imagination. Going to space. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's one password. Uh, it's available in a multitude of different ways. In fact, when we covered uh, the uh, closed beta, they said that there was a snap available, and I'm like, oh god, please no. Oh god, please, can we have an actual package? for it and thankfully i uh clicked on their um support link there's it it's in the article it'll also be in the show notes and i started going through it. it's like oh, okay there's a deb there's an rpm 
There's a snap. And there's an app image. Yep. Nice. Yay. <laughs> Perfect. We're good. <laughs> it's good to see it, man. They get free accounts for open source teams. And um, hey, you can have, get this, man. You can get this set up. What do we Debian Ubuntu sent us Fedora, Red Hat, Rel Linux. Um, oh, Snap Store. Mm-hmm. Go check that out if you don't like app images. <laughs> <laughs> the app image makes it so easy. <laughs> I. Good work, Dave. Founder of 1Password. Canadian. Uh, <laughs> Canadian Dave. All right. Canadian Aww. Dave, man. <laughs> what? You got a problem with Canadian Dave all of a sudden? I, no, I know uh, English, Dave, um, English Dave. And English Dave has another friend called Dave. He calls him Dodgy Dave for reasons. Uh, <laughs> what is he, Welsh? I don't know. Uh, uh, I do know a uh, Welsh uh, Dave. And I've heard many, many stories because he used to work where I work now, many years ago. Mm. Okay. And I hear some okay. stories. <laughs> Welsh, Welsh Dave, only legend. <laughs> no, Welsh Dave is a legend. That, right. that man. <laughs> See, that's how you know you're a legend when you no longer work there. Yeah, we've promoted you out of this department. Now. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Jill, do you get any thoughts on this? Yeah, so you know, we had talked about this uh the Linux development preview which was released in in August and now it's nice to see it in beta and it has a lot of nice new you know, great new features too. So, looking forward to playing with this even more. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You see, you just you put them on sticky notes, your passwords right here on your monitor on the edges like a normal person. <laughs> at home yeah you can well, get away with that well, i mean <laughs> that's one of the advantages of like getting bigger monitors is so you can put more sticky notes <laughs> more together sticky notes, yeah. Yeah, uh, you, you can have longer um passwords better entropy intri- intri- and ah you can go for the passphrase okay i can yeah. man. i have like 43 inches to play with so i i, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know man um there are dangers to using password managers in general. It, they're so convenient. Google, I know I absolutely mm. immediately fell mm-hmm. for the Google's like, want me to save that? Yes, Google. Oh, what? And the first time I realized, wait, this just goes to whatever it device sinks. I log into. Yeah. Uh? <laughs> like, you get all the passwords, Google. Yes. Um, so, and I did run into an issue with, but those are all passwords that like I have come up with. So it's a variation on like 17 to 23 passwords that are 27. You're to going 32. to get captured before you run. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. You got to hack your password sometimes. You know what I'm talking about, people at home. You've done it. You're like, oh, man. All right. What was the account? What password was for this account? Was it this? And you just keep eventually like, ah, oh, I got it. And you feel successful. The problem comes in. I'm curious if this uh, will do this. This could be just a little side jack is, have you had Google or Firefox recommend like, hey, man, we got this ultra secure password for you. Creating a new account. I'm like, you know what? That sounds like mm-hmm. a plan. Boom, I'm going to take that. You can't get logged in to that Google account anymore or at that time. You're never getting in that account again. No, it's gone. There's zero chance of you uh, doing account recovery for that. And uh, I learned that the hard way. So I, I no longer do that. Mm. That was my little um, sad dance. What would you think? <laughs> there's uh, there's uh, also another point to that, which is, um, yeah, they'll suggest the like the 20 or 13 character long passwords which are random to their credit and sometimes i'll go to a website that i don't ever return uh, don't ever intend to return to and i say okay generate me that password and i click create account and it says nope can't have repeated characters on the password it's like mm. i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> the most secure password that my browser just offered to create for your website and you're not taking it uh oh <laughs> that's when I leave. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Whatever I went to that website to do, I don't. <laughs> yeah, then I, I don't like having to, I mean, I rarely create an, uh, there, there was a talk on Linux Gaming um, by Calabra and all that yesterday, and I went, I was like, hey, this would be neat to watch. Oh, I have to create an account? Okay, well, I, oh, I have to, like, register for, but, 
<laughs> no. I pieced right out. This is something I was, this is like something I cover weekly. And no, you just have too many layers of, like just, you get, how about you give me the talk? And um, yeah. No account. Yeah. You're the business, so give me your business. Because if you don't, you're not getting my yeah. patronage. <laughs> Speaking of patronage, <laughs> patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, I'm going to give Pedro a <laughs> patronage point for that one. That was a good smooth segue. <laughs> this is how we finance the show and what we do. If you'd like to help us out, kick some coin. We'd very much appreciate it. We try to give you some cool rewards back in return, up to including access to our Discord. We get a special show. You think this show's just sitting around... You know, talking about some random stuff it has nothing on the pre pre super shows. And that's our production meeting every week, which is basically catching up on movies and all the other fun stuff. But access to our show notes. I did a special stream Monday for our executive producers and maybe not just for them, but I'm like, ah, I, I got some time. I don't want to bug everyone with it. So I did a uh, just a tech setup for uh, the Skyrim job. Because I know eventually in my future there will be uh, streaming a mm. playthrough of Skyrim. So I threw that out for the executive producers and they tuned in and like, hey, it works. It, it runs. And they immediately got bored because, hey, man, it's me playing Skyrim. <laughs> There's not much <laughs> to it. It wasn't there for your entertainment, but just to see if we could make it work. And anyway, it worked out all right. But we got to think uh, a legend Pedro, <laughs> a different kind of legend. <laughs> no, we have a new Patreon. <laughs> we do. Jill, uh, what's our Patreon's name? Yes, our new Patreon's name is Poop Sock. <laughs> so I can say that on LWW. I can say poop. <laughs> but thank you very much, Poop Sock. I like I like your name. <laughs> I'd just like to take thank a moment to appreciate support. that uh one Jill Bryant said uh on uh, October twenty eighth, twenty twenty. I can say poop. <laughs> <laughs> Strange times. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Uh, we do have a couple things. Uh, Amazon. We have wish lists. Pedro's got one. Jill's got one. Uh, I have one for the studio. I got a bunch of stuff. You, I don't use it correctly. If you just want to spy on me, what I have planned for buying for the studio, that's all here. It's boring stuff like drills and chairs and stuff like that. That's how you end up on this wall. Publicly shamed for all time. That's on you. I think Pedro has... Uh, I don't know. What do you have for this? <laughs> Pedro, do you, do you have a new... Uh, I don't have a wall. I just have all of the little... I'm, I, I'm asking things. Pedro about, a, about his wish list, and he's digging in a drawer, so you make sense <laughs> of that. I was just going to show uh, the number of amazing, crazy people that decided to spend their hard-earned money on something for me, which, hang on, hang don't on. get me wrong, I very much hang appreciate on. I, it. I, I gotta cool myself off. <laughs> <sighs> See, mine are right here. They're not quite as many, but, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Mad Stacks couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear you. I was filtering out. <laughs> Jules enshrined hers, so. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, my wish list has a um, couple of SSDs. There's a microphone there. A um, couple of SSDs, a couple Whatever of... Whatever happened with the microphone? Um, Did the guy get back to you? We've been trying to get my uh, Pedro a new upgraded oh, updated yeah. microphone. Oh, yeah. eBay. And <laughs> no, the his last thing was uh, 105, and I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. 105 pounds for this microphone is too much. Mm. It used to. <laughs> used exactly. Oh. New yeah. with a warranty. Okay, 140 pounds. I could probably live with that if I was just buying it. But yeah, for a halfway decent deal, no, 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 no. And you know he'll take a hundred for it. Clearly, if he takes 105, he'll take 100, so I'm just going to wait until that particular listing uh, runs out, mm. and then I'll make another as, offer. <laughs> as a patron, uh, you can uh, enjoy, I, I think Scott got a kick out of our conversation, because uh, patron's like, well, 105, I'm like, a strong turn. it's me, you know, with a purse string, so I'm like, oh, strong turn, it's a bunch of fire. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, of course, it's too expensive, that's why it was up for like two weeks before I even mentioned it to you, and it's still up now. 
And the other listing that has also used ones, but at 150 pounds. <laughs> yeah, those aren't selling. I wonder why. What, what we're looking for. So anybody, anybody in the Britannia or in the EU um, has a hookup for uh, Golden Age D2 microphones or mm. RE320s or RE20s. Uh, let me know because <laughs> I can spin some cheddar, but we've got to be very careful with the cheddar we spin because we don't have a ton of it. But hey, yeah. go buy some shirts. We got shirts. Go Yay. ahead. There you go. Go get yourself that's an them. LWW shirt. Get yourself a sticker. Look at this. Or sticker. use me, penguin. That sticker. <laughs> that's the best sticker in the world. It's a, it, you can censor naughty words with our um, elk sticker. That's the best use for those stickers. That is. Yeah. You can censor naughty words with them, with other semi naughty words. Oh yeah. And before I forget, timestamps and all that fun stuff. That's going to be the little um, YouTube bar if you're watching on the YouTube's now. We finally got that worked out. It takes yeah, a nice. Minute to be processed. Nice. Yeah. There. <laughs> I think we're done. We're wrapped up with a shilling and shameless self promotion. So we can bite a nice chunk Ooh. of traditional October pizza. Ooh, pepperoni pie. Pepperoni pie. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? That's Yummy. A, that's a cheap way to get out of like having to put a lot of pepperoni on something. Just put a little design on it. Like, oh, look, that's yeah. a design. It's so cute. And I'm like, man, I saved a buck on that. All right. <laughs> I only use this much pepperoni. <laughs> but it's artistic. Right. In any case. Um, yeah, go to Rel. You may know him uh, if you've been watching uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly since before uh, LWDW was even around. <laughs> we mentioned Diago several, several times uh, because he's a, one of the um, most extraordinary uh, amazing contributors, and he did a guest article for the Raspberry Pi blog, which is talking about, of course, Vulcan oh, no, on the Raspberry that. Pi what 4. Are those? Are those the knights that go bling? No, that's the knights that go tea. <laughs> Shame on you, Pedro. Go tea. Uh, anyway, the, the <laughs> visual gag over. Um, <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> on behalf of the Mornings Weekly Data Wednesdays, I would like to apologize for the comical stylings of Pedro Mateus. <laughs> visual gag is done now. Uh, if you were looking for a reason to go watch the video version, there you go. Uh, but yeah. He's finished the implementation of Vulkan for the Raspberry Pi 4. It's uh, in Mesa Upstream right now. So if you go and clone the Mesa Upstream repo and build it, good luck. Uh, but you should actually be able to use Vulkan 1.0. It's 1.0 compliant. Uh, the API is complete. So that's that's very good. Uh, so yeah, you could play some VK Quake 3. Mm. Probably not going to awesome. have the RTX course to play VK Quake Quake too, but <laughs> okay. Ten ten years from now, are we going to be able to get a Raspberry Pi with uh, that's going to have the equivalent of RT cores? Oh yeah, <laughs> yes. I think we're going to have an SOC of like, oh yeah, yeah, at least like one or two. <laughs> yeah, I've genuinely started digging around and like exactly what you can and cannot get away with with a Pi Four because I'm going to be asking it to do the second most demanding thing outside of playing video games. It's real time audio. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm very curious, always keeping up with stuff like this. How can I take advantage of Vulcan? I don't know because I'm not going to be using a display server if I can help it. It's all going to be over SSH. So, um, well, yeah. not, I don't know. Pedro was very much against the uh, touch screen I picked out for it. <laughs> I, I yeah. wasn't against it. I just looked at the resolution. It's like, oh, 20, uh, 1024 by 600. Oh, netbook uh, resolution. How much is that? $76. <laughs> that then, That's <laughs> pricey. Then, then I brought you up to speed on the official Raspberry Pi $69 <laughs> one. That is a 480 <laughs> by potato. Yeah, eight forty by four eighty. Yeah, no, those are those are bad. Uh, and that's just for the screen. <laughs> this, this thing's like a full size screen with a stand and a holder and all this other stuff. I'm like, that's yeah, not a bad mm. deal. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can hard mode it and get the by e -ink screen. <laughs> yeah, but Jill, I, this has to be useful. This isn't a collector's item, so. <laughs> I mean, you'll be able to get really nice performance if you decide to use that to play games on your yes. Pi. <laughs> because the resolution's be real low. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, kids. <laughs> but 
she could get the three color <laughs> raspberry pi <laughs> eating screen that'll that, and actually, you'd be that paying be interesting. 80 dollars <laughs> for a seven inch touch enabled one yes i just want yes. to become very clear why i'm the one making the video so keep going <laughs> you're the only one willing to spend that money <laughs> I am, me, how many laptops you, never mind uh let's talk about ubuntu for the raspberry pi because yeah, th- they got full this stock is, desktop stuff. yeah this is huge yeah so the ubuntu desktop 2010 groovy gorilla gorilla Goal. groovy gorilla <laughs> sorry Groovy Gorilla Goal? is now <laughs> officially available for the Raspberry well, Pi 4. I want you to try to say Gorilla while swallowing your tongue. It's not easy. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, no, no. It's Arr. not very easy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, what's also awesome is it's not only for the Raspberry Pi 4, but it's also available for the Raspberry Pi 4 compute module, the four gig and eight gig version we talked about last week. That's amazing. And apparently GNOME runs pretty well on it. So they've really optimized it now to run on the Raspberry Pi. So I am looking forward to playing with this, definitely. (laughs) It's really cool. Pedro, as uh, somebody with a Raspberry Pi 4, uh, have you even plugged it, like done anything with it? Is this a desk prop pretty much? <laughs> uh, right now, it's waiting for the uh, the Pi Boy DMG. That's what this is going in for. Uh, but yeah, it's... Um, what about all can. the time? Well, yeah, out of curiosity, <laughs> all the time before the Pi Boy DMG existed, what, what was it being used mm. for? Oh, I poked at it uh, trying to you know do the desktop thing because they That's were what I'm uh, very you tried using it as a desktop yeah <laughs> and if oh, all you're doing is watching youtube videos uh, it can actually do uh, 1080p 60 fps in chromium mm-hmm. firefox not so much <laughs> but yeah. in chromium you can actually do 1080p 60 it's a smooth experience it's actually very nice you put it in full screen and you go all right okay all right That's- that's very good. <laughs> I'm done with that. Um, good on you. I didn't expect to see that uh, just a full rollout. So and yeah. being able to work with a compute module, mm-hmm. I'd be willing yep. to try. I'm give it a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's just it's install it. Arch on it. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Someone's well, already. You could always put a bunch Someone's of mate on that. it as well. <laughs> 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 and many other distros. <laughs> if you want your pie to be green, go yes. mate. Uh, if you want to get a hold to us, send us some email. You can do that. Uh, we got contact at linuxteamcast.com. That's how you end up on the show. But we are short on time, so we got to balance out of here for this week. Let's roll some credits. Mm-hmm. Yay. If this chair wasn't all the way down, I'd be bouncing right now. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Ben, Seriously, Pedro, thank you all. Jill. And Jill, there and you go. <laughs> advisors, Vigilant Viking. Oh, that's spelt wrong, Vin. <laughs> oh, okay. Ben changed up the... <laughs> yeah, I think it's deliberate nice. at this point. <laughs> Very good, Ben. I like the layout. <laughs> Our producers and executive producers have some new credits to look at. <laughs> Created by but, Brad. Uh, apparently, we learned that Chigo kicks a dollar sign, dollar sign. Well, it was spelled with dollar signs. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, Chigo. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the DCMA. Oh, that, that was deliberate too. Okay, all right. <laughs> I figured that was just a uh, misspeak because I do that. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> groovy gorilla, groovy.